Hi, welcome to the Popcorn Hello. Junkies. Hello, how are you? Good, I'm good. I'm how good. are you? I'm very good, how are you? So we're here to review Nightmare Alley, which is the new film by Guillermo del Toro, who obviously has given us films like Pan's Lab Labyrinth, um, Shape of Water. Did he do a thing called The Devil's Backbone? Yes, The Devil's Backbone. I thought that was the best thing Yeah, he a did. lot of people say that's that's his best film. I think it is. Uh, he produces a lot of stuff, doesn't he? Oh, does he? He did I don't scary know. stories in the dark, didn't he? He, oh, he execs yes. quite a few things. Yes. Um, and so this is Nightmare Alley, which is based on the book by William Lindsay Gresham. Gresham. Um, it was made into a film in 1947. I haven't seen it. I don't know if it was you know garlanded with any awards or critical success or whatever um this film stars bradley cooper it stars willem dafoe it stars tony collette if i missed anyone out there i mean there's obviously lots yeah, kate, kate, kate blanchett. blanchett kate blanchett and richard jenkins i got missed out loads it's quite oh, a cast did, did you know it was richard yeah jenkins? yeah yeah richard yeah. jenkins is one of my favorite yeah I, I, I know that yeah and yeah. he was also of course in shape of water and so this is the story of bradley cooper's character who essentially stumbles across a carnival yeah let me just say this sorry but i just i don't know much about the author of the book but apparently Apparently, before he got so ill in the, the end of his life, he based this on the um, carnival or the funfair at Coney Island. Oh, okay, yeah, which Coney is quite Island interesting. funfair. Yeah, yeah, no, which is featured in quite a few films. Yeah. Isn't it? Um, so this is the story of Bradley Cooper, who stumbles across or walks into a carnival after we've seen this very sort of almost hallucinogenic imagery of him setting fire to a dug grave within a house yes and you see him dragging a body and plopping the body in and no, there's yeah. no explanation no there isn't um and that's you know i always like an intriguing yeah. front end piece like that i thought that was quite neat but for all we know it could be imagination it could be anything absolutely yeah. you don't know whether it's yeah exactly it could be a dream sequence mm. it could be a hallucinogenic i thought whatever. it probably was a dream sequence mm. i didn't know and then after that as i say he he heads towards this carnival whether he's whether it was a destination or not isn't made clear but he slowly over a period of time and this is going to in a sense shorten a huge part of the film <laughs> he inveigles his way into the carnival structure and we have all of the kind of you know the set design and production design and the entire setting i thought was probably one of the best carnivalesque settings i've seen in a film it's very it's very guillermo del toro what like in carnivals what did you think of it did you believe well it? i believed it totally mm. but in fact if anything i believed it slightly too much in the sense that right. um it wasn't it wasn't doing enough for me in itself. It right. wasn't, I mean, there's nothing to say a carnival should be threatening in itself. It's what you bring to it. But at the same time, it was so realistic. And mm. I've read that he said he was de determined to do the things like moving the things and moving the things. Mm. And it would look like they moved that carnival. Mm. And it did. But at the same time, it's sort of, it, sometimes carnivals so speak to me and I think they're so spooky. But this one didn't. I know what you mean. I, I think it looked the part. And I think in a way he it went... It looked too plush in a way. Well, it looked too plush. But also, he, it's almost like he went for such authenticity mm. that he sacrificed what can be often a really creepy element yes. to carnivals. So yes. even down to, you know, the pickled baby with the eye in the middle of its forehead. Yeah. Um, you know... I thought that was thrown away. It was thrown away. Out. I mean, Willem Dafoe was quite threatening too. And, and so you were introduced to this host of characters. You know, the old Ro Rooney Mara's in there. Um, you're introduced to this, you know, group group of characters it's like a circus they have their relationships they all have their acts mm -hmm. the acts weren't dramatic they weren't were they but but again he would say i'm sure well at the time that it's set i mean when is it set the 1930s 1941 or, 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 no 1939 yeah. yeah 1930 somehow i mean they would have been like that i can remember going to a fun fair in blackpool where right. they had spider woman oh. and it was exactly that a load of, oh, legs, a load of legs coming out with a head coming yeah. up and i was petrified I, I suppose i came to this hoping for really dark and twisted almost david lynchian a bit pan's labyrinthian mm. kind of horror and discomfort and unsettlingness mm. i wasn't really unsettled at all and no, so i, I found wasn't. the front almost 30 to 45 minutes i felt like i was there but no, I, I did i almost didn't care i did that you summed up what i felt and i didn't really care about him to begin with because he virtually didn't bradley cooper he didn't say anything he didn't for almost 20 minutes he didn't but let me just say this i thought thank god for bradley oh, cooper yeah, in a way for the simple fact that i don't know whether other people f feel this i mean william De defoe brilliant actor tony mm. collette brilliant actor kate blanchett brilliant actor mm. i've seen them so much they're all playing themselves now yes very and, true. and in a way i sort of think give us a new face and yeah. Bradley to be fair was a new face so I wanted more on his 
face. Very you know? true. Well, yeah, it was a new, a very new type of character for him. Yeah. As you're right, all those other actors, it's Tony Collette. They're, they're doing their shtick, and yeah. William Defoe's being, ah, oh, really, you know, it's the lighthouse. Kate Blanchett again. is doing the siren. Well, we'll get to Kate Blanchett yeah. in a minute, but um, and so he inveigles his way in. He becomes a critical part of the carnival. He develops the act. He becomes a successful. What, what would you call him? Medium slash. Yeah. Uh, mind reader. Yeah, don't forget that he's given the heads up to do that by the husband of Tony Collette, yeah, yeah, who's absolutely. dying of alcoholism and um, yeah. wants to pass it on. I think. Yeah, absolutely. He? And so, and yet, it's kind he's of inferred that 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 character, he was in Nomad Nomadland. Yeah. The character who's the partner of Tony Collette, who is a medium slash, he for me was the focus of the most supernatural potential part of yeah, this. Yeah, he's good as well. Yeah, that guy. you sort of felt his little book of tricks mm. and how to read language. I thought it was going to take off at that point. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. And instead what happens bit of a spoiler this is a spoiler review you're not too sure whether what happens to him at this point you're not too sure whether it's the malevolence of bradley cooper mm -hmm. the opportunism of bradley cooper because bradley cooper essentially wants that job yeah and he wants to earn a good living and he wants to you know sort of move move his way up the social strata yeah, yeah. um he hooks up with the rooney mara character um, again, is, what does she do in the carnival? She does well, she gets electrocuted. electrocuted yeah. she, she's electrocuted Electric all the time. Woman. Electric woman. Um, and again, you know, he went into the director went into great detail of them recreating the new electric chair. Mm. There's all of that sort of stuff. And then but, you got two seconds. And then of you got it. two seconds of it. But it was the first hour. I was finding myself really fidgeting. Yeah, and me, which is a shame. It's a real shame. And and then it got really, I thought, really interesting for Bradley Cooper's character as we went two years later mm, mm. and he has become this sort of successful yeah. charming smarmy sort like of Houdini or like Houdini like Houdini but not yeah not pulling himself Mr. out of things memory. but kind of yeah. sort of you know predicting what's in bags what people are thinking you know seancey sort of stuff medium seeing dead people but of course he's not it's all I fun. thought that was the the most watchable and the most sort of on at the edge of your seat seeing that where he's with all the people yeah. in the thing and well i thought it was most successful when you were you were doubting the limits of his his magic yeah. and skill yeah i thought that's where it got really edgy yeah and it didn't get edgy around anything sinister no beyond it didn't that, did it? It was... and that's the beauty of bradley cooper as well because is he opportunistic yes yeah. but his innocent eyes it yeah. makes it look as if it's all just falling in his lap absolutely. he's a great actor for that part that role yeah yeah absolutely um, and alcohol is threaded through in the background you you've got a sense that the original guy married to tony collette dies of alcoholism mm -hmm. um you it's told to you that bradley cooper hasn't drunk for so many years yeah so there's a get... big definition between alcohols which i thought was funny yes. wood alcohol wood which alcohol, seems to be yeah. the worst in the sense that probably there's the barrels pure and all alcohol. that kind of stuff and then he and then he meets Kate Blanchett at one of his sort of big public sort of shows where he's kind of going guessing what's in a bag and Kate Blanchett guesses that he's kind of a mm. con a con artist and she's a psychiatrist. There's a sort of sexual frisk on there, isn't there? Even yeah. in this crowd scene. Yeah. You know, he's like, "What have you got in your hand?" And yeah. she's, "What do you think I've got in my Absolutely. hand?" And there's all sort of this stuff going on. So you know that's going to go further. Yeah. And it does go further. And then they does. sort of curiously become bedfellows in a sort of <laughs> literal sense but also in a kind of we want to con the world sort of sense and yet yeah she, he's very much being manipulated by Kate Blanchett and I think this is one of my problems with Kate Blanchett a Kate Blanchett only ever does Kate Blanchett she does and I find it a little bit mannered yeah and a little bit don't you think what I said we've seen it a million times seen it now a million times, yeah exactly and I also didn't quite understand why she wanted to kind of hamstring him no, I knew she was setting him up. Yeah, but why? Because he was a con artist? No, well, I thought it was because something to do with the final scene, the final payoff and the final thing that happens is that she had something to do with that, that where he'd, uh, the Richard Jenkins character had hurt her yeah. and she wanted to get back at him but well, and sacrifice Bradley into yeah. him. It wasn't said. No, essentially one of Kate Blanchett's clients is this incredibly high, we presume, sort of gangster type. He's yeah. the head of a sort of mob but so type rich thing, but got so, yeah, everything. Yes, so rich. And Bradley Cooper gets himself in too deep thinking he can make lots of money and he gets himself in too deep. He also, and I really like the introduction of alcohol to Bradley Cooper's character, Kate Blanchett ensnares him with drinking some whiskey and then kissing him. Oh yes. And I really like that. I thought that was a really subtle, clever way yes. of him relapsing in a sense. Wow, that's scary, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's scary. And so it plays out in the most sort of bloody, uh, though not bloody enough, um, there's injury detail. We saw this with Izzy and she, she said, what is injury detail? And when you saw a, no, a, a nose caved in and someone ran over, I said, that's injury that detail. Was proper. It was proper, detail. wasn't it? But I, you know what, when that happened, I was thinking, I could have done with more of this. 
Yeah. I mean, I know it's not appropriate to the story, but no. I thought I wanted more of this. Um, it was very restrained, the whole thing. I it was. Thought. It was almost like holding us at arm's yeah, length. Yeah, it went it? for spectacle. And I, believe me, nobody loves that sort of spectacle better than me. The carny, the colours. The, yeah. It was beautifully shot. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't think, how can you show, well, I mean, just to go back to the thing in a bottle with one eye. And they referred to it yeah. and not make that sinister. Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't what know. What was either. the point of even introducing it? I think it? his descent, and so, you know, it's a, it's a Faustian pact yes. film, isn't yes, it? It's the Faustian it. pact. He makes a deal with the devil. He, 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 he descends to the dark side. <laughs> uh, he gets ever deeper into, into hell. And in a sense... He's with Rooney Mara now by this yeah. sense, and they're going all round, and he's yeah. very big in terms of what yeah. he... Yeah, you said that. And he, and he kind of... And then there's a payoff scene with him and the Richard Jenkins character, which is, again, that was tense. I felt tension it there. Was. And so there were moments. And so, in, in a sense, this film ignites in the last half an hour. And I think he could have truncated all the front of it and made it a lot tighter. My problem with this film was I loved the theme of, uh, you know, his rise out of sort of penury and, and, and poverty and this curious background with this body that's been thrown yeah, in. Yeah, and almost sort of sleeping rough. He, sleeping I mean, he rough. Really, really yeah, he got wasn't low. quite a hobo, but no, he wasn't but he was far almost, from it. Yeah. And I liked his ascent yeah. and then I liked his descent, but I was hoping it would be a bit more ragged. Yeah. And a bit more sort of sinister and and, and yeah. psychological for saying it was you know we had a psychiatrist in there and all that kind of it wasn't yeah. very psychological it wasn't and also i kept thinking <laughs> which is a strange thing to think but i kept thinking i don't know about Guillermo del toro whether i've liked anything except the devil's backbone <laughs> because but i always think mexico they're so steeped in death yes. maybe they'll really fling it to yeah. us you know and all of this but I was waiting and waiting. And, and that's the other thing. I wasn't surprised by anything in this film. And for me, no, as a recovering either. alcoholic, there's something very compelling about watching someone demise through alcohol yeah. and alcohol being part of the equation. Yeah. And suffice it to say, Nightmare Alley is where they pick up the, the one freak in the in the carnival that you do see at the beginning. And again, this wasn't frightening enough. No, it there's wasn't. Some, someone called the Geek. The Gimp. No, it's no, the, the geek. geek. The Geek. <laughs> it's the Geek. Believe me, it's the Geek. The Geek, yes. Sorry. And the Geek is essentially a drunk... Uh, hobo who is got picked so up by low. a carnival got so low that the carnival organiser Willem Dafoe could hook him in by saying work for us and you can get some free alcohol in a home and they become a mad person in, yeah. a, in a cage. Like a sort of animal crouched down yeah. and just interested Eating chicken. in They throw they... chickens in and say eat the chicken. Bites the chicken. And so the arc of this film I won't give away the absolute ending but suffice it to say it's a little bit circular mm. and that <laughs> arc and that ending is horrifying. Yeah. But it wasn't horrifying enough. No, 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 no. Would you agree? Taking the words out of my mouth, yeah. Yeah. And I thought Bradley Cooper was giving it everything, but he didn't have a lot to work with. I thought I thought all sorts of things about Bradley Cooper. I thought, thank God he's in it. He's, he's real pleasure on the eyes, isn't he? I mean, you can't really get no. enough of him. No. I sort of started to think, although I agree with you that he was much more in the last half of the film, I started to think they're not giving him enough to do. No. In the sense that he's being showman, he's not being showman. Yeah. But there's far more to Bradley Cooper yeah. as we've seen before. And I sort of felt like, where was that? Yeah. And, um, and then, yeah, the Kate Blanchett thing being Kate Blanchett and all yeah, of that. Yeah. Now, clearly, this is a film noir and it's got a lot yeah. of kind of positive reviews because I think. You know, it is riffing on film noir. And I do, in defence of Kate Blanchett, I think she was perfectly, you know, yeah. purposefully playing the femme fatale. Yeah, yeah. And the femme fatale is that sort of evil woman who's looking to ensnare, she... almost the black widow, yes, yeah, smoking in a corner yeah. with a long hat. Yeah, and yeah. Her. And I thought they did a good job with that. I think she was characterised in that sense. But it was almost like he observed all the genre rules without putting any humanity or human characterization in exactly, there. Exactly. So exactly. all the characters are almost like props. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's, here's, here's a thought, and I've got a reading of the film that makes it sound almost a bit more sophisticated. Mm. So Kate Blanchett is the mirror image of Bradley Cooper. Yes. Her psychiatry is a con. Yes. Her con is the same con that Bradley Cooper's enacting. Oh, wow. The money's gone, she's got the money. Yeah. They're only dollar bills when she gives them the money after yeah. the Richard Jenkins yeah. scene, which is quite dramatic. Yeah. Um, and so consequently, she is exactly the same as him and they face the same thing, but she's better at it. That's, and she's yeah. used psychiatry as the mysterious, you know, dark arts yeah. of, kind of conning people. Yeah. And yeah. she feeds him the information and then he fails. And yeah. so in that sense, I think it's quite an interesting yeah. You know, narrative. Yeah, no, it is. I hadn't actually thought yeah. that concretely, but you're no, right. No, absolutely. And and so and also I think the film noir esque kind of elements to it 
elevates it slightly above, you know, yeah. lots of other films that are made. I mean, effort was made to make this cinematic. Absolutely, it's very cinematic. Very cinematic. So I'm going to sum up, shall we sum mm -hmm. up the score? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we've kind of said everything, but I, I think this is a film that definitely gets better as it goes along. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminded me of that book, Hangover Square. I thought Hangover Square and Nightmare Alley, we could have lots of books about alcoholism and demise. Yeah. We could have something crescent and something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I liked the story it was telling. I liked his ascent. I liked his descent. I love anything that's a sort of Faustian pact with the devil. Um, but it just it just fell flat. It felt anodyne. It felt sort of like it just wasn't interested in the deeper no. machinations of the characters. It wasn't really interested in going deep into any of the characters. No. Um, it didn't go deep into magic. It didn't even really exploit the fine line between supernatural uh, and and sort of the real world of mediums versus, and I think he could have done that without suggesting there is anything supernatural. No, I mean, for example, Tony Collette's sorry to jump in, but Tony Collette's part is that, isn't it? She's like a medium in yeah. the sense that she uses. Well, tarot there's the tarot cards. card moment, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but but it's truncated. It's it tiny. It's, it's tiny. tiny. And I felt that could have been threaded. And, and, and to be honest with you, with a director like Guillermo del Toro, I'd have thought he would have really gone for that. I did. I did. You know, it's a rich scene. Yeah. yeah. To sort of have it nudging and nibbling at the edges of. He's really not in control of his destiny for other reasons other than just alcohol. Yeah, I you know think I mean? he read more into it than me. Yeah, well, oh. he, but he didn't do that. No, no, no. So I would, in the end, give this film probably 60 out of 100. Okay. So what would you do to say? Well, I don't know if this is allowed, but I'd give it two different marks. I'd give it about 85 or 86 or even up to 90 for look. Wow. I thought it looks yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But in terms of keeping me interested, story, the whole carnival shtick, which believe me, I love. I mean, I thought the book I thought he should have done was Something Wicked This Way Comes, which right. is a fabulous book by right. Ray Bradbury. Yeah. And, and then again, I've, I don't know this book, but he probably stuck to it. And But it's a very long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and also, let me just say this as well. I think partly what the problem with this was is that we've seen so many other good things us comes to mind where people go into yeah, have yeah. those spooky moments yeah. and it's almost like it's moved on and that, that uses fun fair slash carnival it's, that's what it? i'm saying yeah, i yeah. mean the whole geek thing has moved on yeah and yeah. and in that respect i thought when the geeks introduced at the beginning um i thought well is something dramatic is going to happen in a minute nothing dramatic happened did it not really, really? For, well apart from in the last 15 to Except 20 minutes Except in the last 15 20 minutes yeah. so i'd give it a lot for the look of it but for actually keeping me on my seat and giving me what I wanted, yeah. I'd give it 35. Wow, God, that's a huge disparity, yeah, isn't it? it is, All right. it okay, is. well, there you go, guys. Tell us what you think if you've seen it. Leave your comments below. And that's Nightmare Alley for you. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.